Welcome into a champion's edition of the Sacred Heart Coaches Show as Sacred Heart Athletics was busy winning some rings over the weekend. One of two teams captured the Northeast Conference title and we start with the football team, their second straight Northeast Conference title over the weekend, their third in the past four seasons. Head coach Mark Nofrey joining me with the championship trophy and coach once again congratulations. Walk us through the game, how it came out, you guys ended up going up, getting tied and then ultimately running away with the game. We've talked about your team's resilience. How did you see it on display on Saturday? I think, uh, you know, I think the kids were ready to play, obviously, and, and they knew what was at stake. And, you know, their goal and their mindset was that they wanted to win the NEC outright and not share it with anybody. So preparation-wise and, and being ready to play, you know, they were there and it was good to see. Um, obviously, we started a little bit slow at times. Um, you know, I think the momentum shift or the turning point of the game uh, is, was when they punted the ball to us and it ended up on the half yard line. Um, and we take the ball and we go 99 and a half yards for a touchdown. I mean, you can't, when you want to talk about breaking someone's back or you know turning the momentum and, and just step on somebody's throat, I think that was the turning point of the game. And I couldn't be more proud of the way we did it. Running the ball down the field with our two-headed monster um, and just setting the tone from there on out. Um, you look at it, the game from that point on, we just started to pull away and didn't look back. And, and it was great to see the kids being successful and being able to do that and not let them hang around. So the win, as I said, your second straight, but it's your second Northeast Conference title in the calendar year 2021. Obviously winning in the spring, doing it again in the fall. Given the way that you guys had to navigate through the spring season, come back with a shorter off season and do the same thing again in the fall. What does it say about your kids and the way that they were able to take what was thrown at them and still come out on top? I think it says a lot about their character, which we talk about. Um, the mere fact of how much they love football and the mere fact of what they had to sacrifice in order to play and to be healthy and then to be able to turn around on a short um, timetable, you know, when you are when you just finished playing April 26 or something like that and then you're back at camp again August 3rd and you're not just playing five games, now you're playing 11 games. So uh, I think they did a great job preparing, coming off the spring season, fighting through what they need to do with the COVID restrictions, winning it in spring, then being able to come back on short notice, rest their bodies, take care of themselves, make football important to them, and winning a conference championship, which they just did in the spring. Um, and you go and you look, and you know, at one point, right after the Howard game, we lost, and the kids have been like, oh, you know what, we won it in the spring. Let's just finish out the fall, whatever happens, happens. No, they came together as a team. They were, it was important to them. They wanted to achieve the goal of winning it back to back and winning another Northeast Conference Championship, and they did that. And again, it says a lot about who they are as people, character, and how much they love football. So we look ahead to your first round matchup in the FCS playoffs. You guys are going to Worcester. You're taking on Holy Cross. What in your early prep for them stands out to you about? They're an outstanding football team. There's a reason why they're nine and two. Um, they're three-time Patriot League champs. They beat an FBS school in UConn this year. So listen, Coach Chetney's done a great job up there, and he's won at every school he's been at. Um, they're well coached. They have good players. They got a dual quarterback system that I think is outstanding. They have one of the better linebackers in the country for all FCS. So. Again, we're a good football team. We have to go up and play our brand of football and play up to our capabilities. And like I said, we'll be ready to go on Saturday. And you guys and the program itself is looking for its first win in the FCS playoffs all time. But this is arguably your best team all around on both sides of the ball. So what about this team makes you confident that you can finally crack that that win column in the playoffs? Um, what they've been able to overachieve and or what they've been able to achieve and overcome from the spring, from COVID to this season, to the way it started out slow with the injuries, they've overcome a lot in the last 12 months. Um, that's why I feel confident that if we're able to play up to our capabilities and, and play to our best, that we have a very good shot of being in uh, you know, the game at the end and hopefully pull it out. Let's go to our Ask Nof section of the show. As always, you want to join the conversation, go on Twitter, ask your questions, use the hashtag AskNof. Now, some championships are on the closer side, as we saw in the spring against Duquesne. Others, like the one we saw on Saturday, had a little bit of breathing room. Are you ever aware or expecting or looking around for the Gatorade shower at the end when you guys clinch the title? Um, there's a lot of things going through my mind, and that's not one of them at the point. Um, not really. Um, I always love them. I mean, as a head coach, you always want them. And it means a lot when uh, your players do that. Uh, I think myself, 
I just, I love the fact that the kids want to celebrate and they just accomplished something. Um, and it's great to be recognized like that, but I'm really not thinking about it until almost like the last second. And I'm like, uh oh, something might be coming and it usually happens. Well, let me ask you this. When you know you have a chance to clinch, do you, do you pack an extra set of clothes just in case? <laughs> I always you pack get... an extra set okay. of clothes. So. All right, so you stay prepared. All yeah. right. Well, this week, obviously, you guys are preparing for your first round matchup, but it is the week of Thanksgiving. Obviously, kind of two different things. How do you handle the week's prep going into the game with the holidays? <clears throat> yeah, well? most most kids are getting ready to go home. Um, our team's here. We're practicing. It's a normal week for us. Um, we'll practice today, tomorrow, Thursday morning. Um, we'll have all our game stuff completed. And, and uh, some of the kids that are not traveling to the game will be going home Wednesday night. Uh, the kids that are traveling to the playoff game will be here practicing Thursday, Thursday, Early morning we'll practice and then they'll have the rest of the day and evening to do, you know, go home or go within an hour and a half, two hours of Sacred Heart, go have dinner with somebody's family, uh, maybe a teammate, maybe a, a relative, and then we're going to gather back up Friday morning and uh, we'll pack the bus and, and head to Worcester and we'll practice up there Friday. So try to keep it as normal as possible, but on Thursday we'll practice early morning and then let the kids go somewhere for dinner. Sacred Heart's back in the FCS playoffs. They take on Holy Cross this Saturday. Kickoff is scheduled for noon as the Pioneers look for their first ever win in program history in the FCS playoffs. Coach No, thanks so much for joining me. Good luck in the playoffs. Thanks, and hopefully we have another one next week. Welcome back to the Champions edition of the Sacred Heart Coaches Show as we go from the football team to the women's volleyball team, fresh off of their own Northeast Conference title over the past weekend. Rob Machen, the head coach, joins me in the studio. Coach, congratulations. Walk me through after that first set against Bryant. Mm -hmm. Guys dropped the first set. What was the mindset like? What was the message to him that allowed you guys to storm back and take the final three sets to win the title? We knew that Bryant was playing very well. Their home crowd was engaged, a lot of energy in the gym, and they had a lot of energy. And we were actually playing well, but Bryant was just really going hard and super high energy. And we, we didn't feel like that that energy would be maintained the whole match. So we knew if we could just maintain our composure, execute on our side of the net, um, let the game find a rhythm, and it did. And once the game found a rhythm, we kind of found some control on our side. How much of having a senior leading class help you guys in those situations where you're in a hostile environment mm -hmm. and you have to find any way you can to grab momentum back? That was wonderful. I mean, players have been there before, they've done it before. What I was really impressed with is how our young players really just adapted also. So usually there's like a, a give and take with that where the older players are trying to exhort the younger players, but everybody just felt like, okay, we're in control. We've, we're, we've been doing this all year long. Um, we trust what we can do and they really maintained their composure really well. When I talked to you at the beginning of your season, we had talked about early in the season how you like to schedule difficult opponents mm -hmm. in non-conference to prepare your team for conference play mm -hmm. and beyond should it get to that. Mm -hmm. How did you see it help you guys throughout conference play and how do you see it helping you guys prepare for who you face in the NCAA tournament? One of the things we talked about is if you looked at our road record and our neutral site record, very good. We have winning records on the road, neutral sites, at home. We don't have to be in one environment. Uh, we're very comfortable playing in a lot of different places. The women just know how to perform and how to prepare and they're just ready to go no matter where we go. So I think that preseason, those neutral sites against tough teams and success we had prepared us well for even the tournament against Bryant. Now, you won the conference tournament in 2019, won the regular season title before COVID had things to say last yeah, season, yeah. and you do it again. Yeah. How special is it to come off of what happened last year and the ending to the season to come back, manage the expectations, and be at the top of the conference once again? Um, it, it's extremely special. Uh, the, the women worked really hard. It's difficult to put seasons like that back to back to back. I mean, it's a lot of work, um, a lot of high level play, a lot of demand on their bodies with the spring season going into the fall. And I'm very impressed with how they handled themselves to be able to do it. And I was, I couldn't be more proud of a team with how they performed in this year. And the senior class, obviously, three championships to their name. Mm -hmm. The women's volleyball program is a program that has been successful for many, many years. Yeah. But to have a class come in and win three titles, mm -hmm. what can you say about the legacy that they're gonna leave here? Uh, you, you really 
there's no words for it. I mean, you, you, you hope for that to happen. It's something you really can't plan to happen. You want it and you do everything you can. But the way those women just kept fighting and working, like I say, it's just so unique. Um, you bring in great players, you hope for success. It's a really strong conference and do what they did is just exceptional. And you're no stranger to the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. You guys have a little time before you find out where you are gonna be going for that first round matchup. Mm -hmm. How are you gonna prepare coming off of a championship to get ready for that first round match? Well, you know, we're gonna get a great team. We usually get a very high seed in the tournament, but uh, our team is physical, our team is aggressive, our team is confident, and our goal when we go is to make them work for every point. Um, if we do what we're gonna do on our side of the net, we make sure that we keep that composure we've shown all year long and play well, anything can happen. The women's volleyball team finds out who they will face in the first round of the NCAA tournament at the selection show, and from there, they look to continue the season that ended in a Northeast Conference title 3 Pete, Rob Mason, thanks so much. Good luck in the tournament. Thanks for having me.